It began with one of the greatest stories of all time. One ring to rule them all. One ring to find them. One ring to bring them all. And in the darkness, find them. This is Lord of the Rings. The task was formidable. You are going to be producing that video game? Are you kidding? This game has to be fun to play. It's all about the gameplay. It's something that's larger than all of us. In the end, a group of developers would end up creating a game worthy of the name The Lord of the Rings. In the shadows of Mordor, the Dark Lord Sauron forged the One Ring to enslave all elves, dwarves, and men of Middle-earth. The enemy has returned, and from his dark tower in Mordor, he seeks the Ring. We must take the Ring, and destroy it. Creating a video game is always a challenge, but making a game based on J.R.R. Tolkien's The Fellowship of the Ring is a whole different story. It's not enough for us just to slap the license on any fantasy game and call it Middle Earth. It's very important to us that we start with Middle Earth first and that we bring out what's really important and what's really special about The Lord of the Rings and make the game out of that. There was a critic in the New York Times, I believe, he, uh, he was reviewing The Two Towers when it was first published in the 50s, and he said there are two groups of people in the world. There are those who have read The Lord of the Rings and those who will. I think the challenge that Universal Interactive faces is that The Lord of the Rings is a sacred text to many, many, many people, and so that's a challenge to build upon this property in a manner that preserves the spirit and integrity of the Tolkien works. The journey begins when Black Label Games, formerly Universal Interactive, secures the license to Tolkien's classic trilogy. A lot of games are created on hot licenses, and I think what, what sort of sets Universal Interactive apart is we put gameplay first. It's great to have a movie license, it's great to have a game license, or I mean a TV license, or a literary license. We, we absolutely adhere to the idea that we have to remain within a certain uh, boundaries of that license and we our job is to have that integrity. Uh, J.R. Tolkien has built one of the greatest epic fantasies known and Universal's strength lies in building and, and bringing out of that kind of uh, epic nature the true sort of realism that people can experience and enjoy. Developers strive to capture Tolkien's fantastical universe. When Universal Interactive had the opportunity to begin working on J.R. Tolkien's vision our first goal was to put together what we felt were the elite, the stars, the best of the best in terms of the Tolkien universe and their knowledge of the Tolkien universe. It's not an adaptation to another film or to another play or to, you know, song cycle on an album. It's actually a real strong, direct inroad right into the book itself. This is Lord of the Rings. For you to actually accept this chance to be an artist involved with doing Lord of the Rings, you are required to actually step up and make art far superior than you've ever done before. Our fans are experts. I mean, they know everything, you know, and they they will correct us when we're wrong, and they will they will be picking apart every portion of the game, and we know it. Given the opportunity with the blank slate to create a team here at Universal, I looked at something at a team of passionate Tolkien experts. They had to understand and know the universe inside and out. Uh, we weren't looking for people we had to teach the genre to. We were looking for people who had known the genre intimately enough that they could see how it could extend into the gaming area. Chris Taylor said to me, you know what? Cliff, I think that they're looking for somebody who has a lot of Tolkien experience, who has a lot of you know, academic background in this, in this literary work, and I thought you might like to know that we've got the license to, to do the game. 
the video game. And I looked at him and I said, you? You are going to be producing that video game? Are you kidding? And I, I thought it was, I thought it was fantastic. Take heart, Frodo. We will do this together. We spent a lot of time exhaustively going through resumes to make sure that not only did they have an amazing background in game development, but they knew the J.R. Tolkien universe and Tolkien and that entire space by heart. Furthermore, we try to find people from different disciplines who also could combine their talents in a synergistic whole. We had people who were very experienced in the production side of things, we had people who were very experienced in the creative side of things, and also in the artistic side of things. Uh, one of the prerequisites to actually have the position here was that you literally had to be not only knowledgeable about the books, you actually had to be a fan of the books. I read The Lord of the Rings so often that my first copy uh, has completely fallen apart from where. Uh, I've read it about, um, about a dozen times, and it's ever since we started working on this project, I read it continuously, and it's never lost its power to amaze me or the power to captivate me. I've been a Tolkien fan for about 35 years. It started back when I was in third grade, when I actually had a teacher who inspired me. Uh, she wore a little button to school one day. It said Bilbo Baggins. And who was Bilbo Baggins? Yeah, my mother was a high school English teacher and was reading the book because they had come out in paperback and it was all the rage at that time. And I was intimidated because it looked like an adult novel. But she said, well, it's basically a fairy tale and you like it. You have my thanks, Arwen Andumiel, and my love. I read The Hobbit when I was, uh, I think, in sixth grade. One of my concentrations in college was English literature. And uh, my senior thesis was G.R. Tolkien versus C.S. Lewis. So it's pretty much been part of my life for at least as long as I can remember. You know, I've lost count. I have seriously lost count. I can count how many Dodgers games I've gone to on one hand, okay? But I cannot count how many times I've read The Lord of the Rings. A development team that's perfect for the job must be put together. I had an eight-hour interview, and I was basically bombarded by a group of fans, you know what I mean, who were really, really, you know, they loved J.R. Tolkien, and they wanted to make sure that what I brought to the table actually, you know, gave them that same sort of feeling. I think they uh, have hired people that are, uh, have a very deep love of the Tolkien works and are very knowledgeable about the unique qualities that make Tolkien so special. And in addition to that, they have been very open to keeping a dialogue going because I think no one of us can claim to be an authority on it. It's, too, it's something that's larger than all of us. Now that this dream team of game designers and Tolkien fans is assembled, the real work is about to begin. With a talented development team in place, work on Black Label Games, The Fellowship of the Ring begins. It's very important to the whole team that we start from the real works. We start from where Professor Tolkien was going with these stories and bring out the details and bring out the spirit and bring out the life of Middle Earth. When you think about the numbers, over, over 100 million people have read and enjoyed this story uh, handed down from their parents and they're handing it down to their kids. And all of these millions and millions of people are now going to enjoy the story in a whole brand new way in a brand new visual, immediate way that they've never had the chance to enjoy before. Take care of yourself, Frodo, and bring back all the news you can. I'm writing a book about your adventure. We had to find a, a standard. We had to find the gold standard of Middle Earth. It, it, it will feel right, but not necessarily be exactly what everyone imagines, but be, ex but be very, very close. I was asked to actually create the look for the entire Middle Earth which included all the characters, all the monsters, all the environments, everything that you would imagine that a book would actually have for you to actually come up and show me what that image looks like. As a game artist, as a game designer, you're allowed to actually get involved with it, literally make bag in the way it should look, you know, according to the description, but really to get in so you could almost smell the sweat of the orcs that are surrounding you. The game platform allows you to have that, that, that depth. In order to create all the Lord of the Rings games, we had to build a very extensive style guide. The purpose of the style guide was to keep a continuity of the look throughout the entire franchise itself. But it really 
identifies every element that would be in all three of the books. Uh, 92 environments, 44 item images just for like weapons and swords and a costume design, a whole section on all the characters, the fellowship. This style guide ended up becoming 336 pages long. I mean, it's a coffee table book. It's gorgeous. Um, I mean, it's, everyone who's seen it really wants a copy of it. Then I must guard the ring. And I will help you bear this burden as long as it is yours to bear. Tolkien Enterprises is a guiding force in the development of the game. This project has been very interesting because we've had direct dealings with Tolkien Enterprises and they're sort of the gatekeepers to what is authentic and what isn't. One of the things where we first kicking around the ideas of the game, they were very specific about, you know, Frodo is not a warrior, so Frodo the Barbarian doesn't cut it. And so we have to have gameplay that is truly authentic to the way uh, Jared Tolkien wanted to portray Middle Earth. And so when we do game designs, when we do game art, we take the time and talk to them and make sure that it is accurate. We brought a creative director, Daniel Greenberg, who's been doing this since he was literally five or six years old. And his experience has brought all the depth of the gameplay. You know, example, you know, what the elves look like, what they wear, Galadriel, what, how does she act, what are her nuances. And he could add so many different points to the book that were missing in some descriptions seen in previous games. As creative director, I'm very protective of Middle Earth and of what I consider to be the professor's intent. Our liaison, Lori Battle, has done an extremely good job working with us. So not only does she come back with comments and suggestions, uh, she actually comes back and says, well, let's try this piece of gameplay. Or what about, have you tried about working this into your storyline, which has actually helped us out a lot. And that's why when you look at the depth of gameplay, we are very loyal to the books, and we feel we really capture the spirit of what the original books were all about. The contribution that I bring is, is placed. I really see the magic of Tolkien and the power and story in our present world, and that Tolkien gave us gifts and tools to imbue the real world and that's a broader context that I see all of this playing out in. All the art that you see in this game, especially in the style guide, all had to be approved by the Tolkien Enterprise. So it's approved by our in-house group, then it goes to, to Daniel Greenberg, then it goes to the Tolkien Enterprise. Through their combined expertise, these artists recreate the world of Middle-earth in exacting detail, including the dreaded Mines of Moria. Where do we go? There is another path, the Mines of Moria. When I started creating Moria, I actually created it as if it was brand new, perfect, beautiful, with drapes and lighting and, you know, the reflection, everything was there. Then I went and destroyed it. I'm very excited about the artwork. It's really fun to see the, the lushness of the environment and also the, the iconography of Tolkien, the gate to Moria and the different elements coming to life. Do you really visualize what Middle Earth looks like? And I think the visualization during the gameplay is what we're doing. So you say, yeah, that's what I think, you know, different parts of Moria look like. And I feel like when you do see Moria, you can still feel that. You feel that magnificence as if you've just like come upon something that, you know, you have never seen before and will never be built on this planet ever again. And yet with uh, really the, the tools of computer animation and creativity put together, you're able to like create these environments and worlds with depth and soot and smell and water and um, it's magnificence. Great attention is also given to the creation of classic Tolkien characters. When I create like say Legless or Gandalf or Frodo, I mean I'm down to his buttons, the fabric, if you zoomed into the high-res picture of Frodo, you'll actually see his embroidery that he actually has on the, on the brim of one of his uh, pockets. One of the things when you make the game is you have to have identification with the character you put on the screen. Being a third-person action adventure, you look at Frodo, you look at Aragorn, you look at Gandalf as they're going through the world and says, can you identify with these characters? Can your control system, how you're playing the characters, make you feel like you're actually them? Or is it just like a 2D cutout you're moving around on the screen? And so it's all about conveying emotion to you feeling you're being those characters. All the characters that I actually designed, they were, they were designed from what, what was their drive, what was their motivation, who, who was legless. I wanted to make legless so that you, you were so fascinated by the man that you wanted to know where this elf came from. Because he even looks different from all the other elves. It's like bringing that to the surface of who Legless is. 
And it's almost that like they start to tell you who they are. This title also gives gamers the opportunity to interact with characters found exclusively in the novels. Some of the opportunities I think the game players are going to find in playing our game uh, is the opportunity to explore portions of the novels that were never um, that never made it to the screen. Hello, Frodo. Hello, Angelica. There are there are so many chapters that, for the sake of time, were cut in order to make you know a good movie. And we all know, having seen the movie, it's awesome. But when you look at the works of J.R. Tolkien, it is an epic novel. Ride on, Norolim, Norolim, Asphaloth. That effort, we wanted to pay homage to. And uh, the best way to pay homage to that is to allow fans to explore all the different parts of the world that, that just didn't have time to make it onto the silver screen. Well, everybody's favorite character, Tom Bombadil, who is, you know, one of the most mysterious, misunderstood characters that Tolkien ever created in his legends. And we've never ever seen him. We've never seen him on stage or, or in a movie, and we probably never will. But now we're going to have a lot of adventures with uh, uh, Tom and the Hobbits and all these great characters and monsters and, and different things that we've been missing are all going to be there now. While the visual portions of the Fellowship of the Ring fall into place, Black Label Games is also hard at work crafting a rich gameplay experience. As the team behind Black Label Games, The Fellowship of the Ring, recreates Middle-earth, they address the importance of gameplay. This game has to be fun to play. It's all about the gameplay. That's what we're going to emphasize more than anything else. One of the things that we wanted to attack in this game is giving the player an opportunity to experience Tolkien's world from more than just one perspective. So we've given the players an opportunity to play more than one character, and the characters themselves are very unique and distinct in their abilities. <laughs> Obviously, the first game, Fellowship of the Ring, you're going to be playing Frodo, uh, who's the Hobbit. He has uh, a lot of adventure and gameplay, but he's a sort of central character of the story, so you're allowed to play him through it. I will take the ring, though I do not know the way. Get away! Stay back! But where should we go? Towards danger. But not too rashly, not too straight. We put Gandalf. I mean, everybody's wanted to be the wizard, the magician, to be able to cast the spells, to explore the depths of Moria. Gandalf speaks true. Our troubles may get worse, and sooner than we'd like. And then, of course, you have the, you know, the barbarian, the combat, which is Aragorn, which he'll be able to go through, fight his way through Moria, um, lead the team onward. We want Gandalf's sections to be very different from Aragorn's, to be very different from Frodo's, and we want them to all bring out the unique nature of each of these characters. Frodo gets to do a lot of sneaking and a lot of uh, stealth and, and thoughtful puzzle solving. Gandalf gets to do puzzle solving as well, but we had a whole component of spell use and of fighting and of ferreting out mysteries in, in, within Moria. And for Aragorn, we've added uh, the most combat-oriented sections of the game of all, so the players will have a chance for a lot of action-adventure in addition to stealth and magical gameplay. The unique portion of the gameplay is that you need to master all three of these skills in order to move the gameplay forward. In certain sections, you need to think with your wits and not with your brawn. In other sections, you need to have a good combat eye. You need to understand how to attack different enemies and how to defeat multiple opponents. We've, we've built a chronological timeline to show where certain adventures and episodes happen as the Fellowship of the Ring progresses. From the beginning to the end. This pace. We leave the, Barrow Downs by the Fellowship of the Ring game is full of little surprises for Tolkien fans. We, uh, we try to weave in aspects of the book that people might not expect to come out in gameplay. For instance, the way that we teach the player how to use the controls in a little tutorial section, we've actually adapted from the section of the book where Frodo's home is overrun by his unwanted neighbors. It's very easy to make a hack and slash combat game. We could have taken that route and uh, you know, delivered at least one aspect of what fans would have expected in, in the movies or in the games and the books. What we wanted to do was attack 
this from the opportunity to give players and the fans more than just that. While this game focuses on the first novel of the trilogy, the developers make sure they keep the next two books in mind. That leads on to the next two books with Two Towers and Return of the King, and so we're scripting their adventures of the Fellowship through those two books. It's like Saving Private Hobbit, I guess is the best way to say look at it, where you have you know, the, the experience of being there, and I think that's what people want to see. They want to be part of it. Black Label Games ships the Fellowship of the Ring in late 2002 for the PlayStation 2, Xbox, PC, and Game Boy Advance. Tolkien fans and gamers alike are treated to one of the most anticipated Tolkien games ever made. If I were a fan and I was waiting for this game to come out, I would be beside myself waiting to see the parts of the book that I have never seen before. I've only read about parts with Tom Bombadil, parts in the old forest, places where we are going to have such an amazing opportunity for players to explore the world of Tolkien and his vision. Then we made it. But we needed you, Gandalf. I was held captive by the treachery of Saruman the White, the chief of the wizards. But now I am free and astonished that you brought the ring all this way. Hobbit seem especially resistant to the evil of the ring. Being able to bring this, our vision, uh, with such a talented group of people alive, has really been sort of like a lifelong dream. What I'm most excited about is, is to be there to see how people actually receive it. You feel honored by this chance. You feel like this isn't, this doesn't happen but once in your lifetime. It's been almost like a, a hobby and an academic study and a passion of my own over over the past 20 years, and it's been great. It's been very, very fulfilling.